Hey, buddies, Potato Big Whiskey here, and welcome to Civilization VI. As America, where we are building the biggest, boldest, and most beautiful empire that you ever did see. Let's grab an artifact from Eleanor. A map, eh? Neat. I still think you should be able to trade maps with other players, or at the very least, like, reveal continents to each other. Like, if I fully explore... Okay, that's a dead scout. Like, let's say I fully explored, uh, I don't know, like Pangea Ultima. Or I had, like, some knowledge of, like, a subcontinent or whatever. I should be, they should be able to be like, hey, do you, you got any maps of, like, this place over here? And I should be able to be like, yeah, you can have a map of, like, the southeast corner of Pangea Ultima. So, we have near future governance. Now, I, I don't really think that switching to, any, like, like, digital democracy, does that really help me? I don't. I don't see how this helps me with a culture victory. I, I Synthetic technocracy, right? That's a good science victory one because it's city projects and stuff like that. And you don't care about tourism. Corporate libertarianism, I can see how that's great for like a domination victory. But I just don't see the benefit of going to digital democracy. It just seems like a straight downgrade. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. In terms of what is available to us, though, uh, we could go for global warming space tourism i guess i'll just go to the end of the tree like the thing is a lot of these cards don't do enough in the late game in my opinion for them to be worth like to beeline or to make an effort for we are getting our art studios and stuff up now um since our preserves are fully built we're heading deep into the late game and going deep is also what i do with your mom we got him boys he got roasted let's keep getting some military engineers we want to we want to build railroads we want to build railroads so looking at the city of Kume, i mean there's not really good things i could build in here there's like uh, one two three this is kind of a national park here but not really the, you know i would have to maybe settle another city i i just don't think that's appropriate here for Kume. so i think Kume just makes me more settlers because then i can use a little bit more land uh, i think i can get another national pork here. I do love some national pork. Let's get ourselves a naturalist. Make sure all these tiles are owned by the appropriate city. And then this naturalist should be able to build that next turn. We did get an archaeological museum. That's an archaeologist on the cards. And we'll go for the film studio. And we will continue to plant forests because planting forests is something that I find very fun. Now, the city of Mediolanum has built a builder. It has its theater square. It has its preserve. I don't really have a whole lot that I want to do with this city. I guess theoretically I could settle a couple of extra cities here, but these don't really do much in terms of tourism for me. Maybe the best thing to do would be to build a neighborhood and to actually... Yeah, I think I think going for a shopping mall here is a reasonable thing. That's rice. I don't think I need to. I think I will just plant it there. And we'll get some more ski resorts. Even though this is technically out of the range of the city, we may as well do it. Um, yep, that's all fine. I don't really have a I don't really have a use for a governor title. I'm sitting on three. Like what the hell do I even take here? I mean, I guess I guess appointing Moksha into uh you know, like Washington or something is probably fine. That gets me like a little bit of extra faith because he does give you plus two faith for every district in the city, which I guess is okay. Citadel of God, I guess, is fine too. It gives you 25% of the faith of a construction cost of a building. And I guess I do have like a decent amount of buildings to build. So this is like a great way to get like a tiny little chunk of extra faith over time. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just not that good. Jebediah has... Oh, Jedediah. Jedediah. I didn't even know that Jedediah was an option. I thought it was always Jebediah. Uh, but he found a thing from Buenos Aires. We will grab that. That seems totally fine by me. There is some rock band shenanigans going on somewhere in the world. Uh, there's always a danger of a rock band. Because if a rock band really pops off, um, it will actually just like completely obliterate your empire in terms of tourism. We're building a nice railroad. We connected two cities with a railroad. And I think I'll get one more military engineer. And then that'll be the mall, and we'll, we'll slowly build railroads. There we go. We got the film studio in Chicago. Um, we could get the zoo. I don't think I need amenities. I mean, more amenities, I guess, is fine. I mean, there's not a reason. There's, there's no reason not to get them. Now, if we're thinking about the city of Cleveland, I'm not really sure what I do in here to make more yields. Like it's got it's a seventy production city. It's got twenty percent amenity boost. It's making insane culture. It's making insane science. It's making insane faith. I guess, theoretically, a holy site somewhere might be like a step up. Uh, this tile right here seems totally reasonable to me. Just pop it right there and we'll get a holy site. And maybe we'll get a little bit of extra faith out of that. 
uh, more artifacts. Yoink, thank you. Slowly, like now, artifacts don't actually give you that much tourism, but it's it's the the important thing is that we we want to keep our direction of an increase always like in in the positive direction. We never want to have a decrease. We always want to be trying to get our tourism higher and higher, even though there is a diminishing return on the amount of tourism that we can acquire. Right, like eventually we'll hit a point where like more tourism really doesn't do a whole lot for us. Um, and I, I still think this location for a city is like super unfortunate because what I really want to do is like, I guess, well, hear me out. If I were to settle here, okay, I could settle a city here, then another national park would fit pretty cleanly right along here. Then we could do a preserve here, grab ourselves a national park for this tile, then another national park would fit here from another city, like so. And then this one would have its own preserve. So we've got kind of like this little pattern going that seems to fit really neatly. So I just need a city within three tiles of this and these four. So my options are one, two, three. So every, so, hmm, it's an unfortunate location. I think if I were to settle it, it would be here, which I hate. I hate this city location so much so maybe maybe not but there are like good spots for holy sites i want to like plug these in for holy sites and stuff like that to make sure i take I, I i make use of them i mean i guess on gypsum on gypsum is probably the best deal i'm gonna get in this area um one two three and then like here is also reasonable probably not going to build that holy site so this looks a little bit more my speed i think and i'm gonna go ahead and, and settle across the lake so i can instead of having to walk people all the way around i can like cross the lake instead of you know going the long journey another artifact from buenos aires i should probably look into theming a little bit soon um i wonder if i can even do theming right now all right let's drop a national park in rome three era score by the way we probably will hit a golden age every single era from now on just due to the fact that every time you drop a national park you get three era score which is a lot Somehow Buenos Aires is still alive, and I think it's because they only have ranged units attacking the city. This is just like more AI silliness. Washington got its commercial hub. Uh, let's go ahead and build the market, the bank and the stock exchange, all that sort of stuff. Let's finish this flood barrier because this tile was looking a little bit uh, worse for wear. Another art museum finished in Charleston. Let's get the film studio. Another settle in Baltimore. Hello. Why don't you go ahead and cross the river for me? Well, river, lake, rather. Not the river, Jesus. Um, am I fully built in here? I guess I'm missing a Ferris wheel and an aquatic center and aquarium, so we'll get to work on those. Um, escape on foot. My spy was finally caught. He managed to pull off so many spy steals. Although at this point, I think spy steals are like a little bit irrelevant. Not like entirely irrelevant, just like a little bit irrelevant. What? Now, who are we trading with here? I think we need to resume trading with Edinburgh. Because we need to maintain a, uh, a trade route with everyone. Oh, wow. We're actually... Um, <laughs> we're making so much tourism that we're 18 turns from winning. Um, that's pretty good. That is a solid result. Um, now, I imagine that's actually... It's going to be a little bit longer than 18 turns. Um, but, but possibly even faster if I can increase my acceleration. But this is what I talk about. Civ, Civ, Civ is very bursty. You get to a point and then you just... You're, you know... You build like this is this is kind of like the style of play I like to I like to do where, you know, you, you have a sort of fairly slow and grueling early to mid game. Um, and then it's just like when all of your abilities activate, you know, it's like it's like being a late game carry in Dota 2. It's like you, you get your six slotted item, you ignore your team for 40 minutes, farm six items, and then you teleport it to the enemy base and 1v5 everyone. And then you like then you fountain dive for the next five minutes uh, while the enemy team. Uh, wonders why the game doesn't have a surrender function yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and head to Cultural Hegemony and then make our way towards whatever this unrevealed technology is. My big problem with um, Hallyu is like the counter to rock bands is like, it's like here, right? Where is it? Hold on. I don't even remember where the counter to rock bands is. I Yeah, here it is. Like you get rock bands here and then the counter card is here and it's it's just a counter card. That's it. And it's like, okay, game over, I guess. I just don't get to use rock bands anymore. And it feels like a very uninteractive counter. I mean, I guess I'm forcing them to use a card. I, I, I don't know. I guess it's fine. It's not a big deal. So one of the important things is when you're getting close to a win in a game, um, a lot of actions you're going to be taking are kind of meaningless. And that's just by virtue of the fact that all of the actions before this were so meaningful to have put you in a position where the stuff you're doing now, you know, doesn't really influence the outcome of the game.
Um, which is kind of an interesting place to be because it means I can experiment, I can try things out. And I also know that like my victory is relatively inevitable. Let's go ahead and settle a new city. This one, I'm going to go ahead and in insert a whole bunch of cash into this one. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and yoink my friend Reyna here and put her into this brand new city so I can, you know, jack up as much gold into it as possible. I'll trade away all my spare uh, yunk. The yunk that is in my trunk we shall throw away all of these it's probably an easier way to do this but hey uh let's take all the trade deals that are available uh another great musician i do like a great musician myself from time to time they're very tasty especially with barbecue sauce uh uh now settler making your way over here i think i think i have too many this is like the first time in my life i will say this but i think i have too many builders <laughs> <laughs> I think I have too many builders. I it's well, I guess the theater square here works too, actually. Um, yeah, Buffalo. Well, you know, we definitely want the mine for nanotechnology boost. And then uh Buffalo, go ahead and get to work on a harbor for me. Although to be honest, you actually don't need to do anything except like I, I guess to slowly build a harbor, but it's not like a discount set. I, I get I still really miss that like it just feels wrong to me that like if you could I can half build something and I get no gold discount on it. You know what I mean? Like, where's my, where's my discount? I deserve a discount, okay? I am a loyal... <laughs> I am a loyal customer of the Civ shop, okay? I want my discount. I've been shopping here for many years, and I deserve to be rewarded. Where's the customer loyalty program, okay? Yeah, I, I, I you know, I just, I think, I, I get what they're going for in that, like, maybe production and gold need to be like separate resources in the sense that they can't be used combined to finish something but gold purchasing in general is just like a little a little wonky in my opinion it, I, it's like you know you can't just pump infinite money and make a factory appear overnight you know there's like there's 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 a little bit of a lag time i think it was actually one of the civ 5 mods what it did was it um it implemented a thing where gold purchasing actually just gave you a discount on the building rather than like just totally finishing it, which was a really interesting way to approach that problem. And I think it was a it was kind of an elegant, if if imperfect solution. And I liked it personally. Uh, yeah, let's -a go. It's a me. It's a Mario. How is she cutting by? Let's start making some more forests. I do love a good forest. That was not what I meant to do. God damn it. I can afford a new national park soon. I would like to make the Chicago National Park. I know it's not a very good one. Well, I should actually look at the appeal map mode, really. Because, like, mountains have a fixed appeal. I'm pretty sure. Do I have any national parks encompassing mountains? This is a great way to check this. Uh, apparently not. None of my national... Oh, here we go. Appeal breathtaking. So, like, this is 99 tourism. You know what? I don't think it matters. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 99 tourism from a single national park is an insanity. So we're at 18 turns until we win. The turn rolls over. We get our little pop-ups, all that jazz. There's cultural hedge money. And then I pop back and forth. And now we're at 40. So we are accelerating, which makes me really happy. I like going fast, okay? So finishing the future civic tech gives you governor titles and 50 diplo favor. I, you know, that seems a little... I mean, it's okay. It's fine, demonstrably. Uh, let's go ahead and do Stock Exchange Stadium. We built an archaeologist in Ostia. Let's get a film studio archaeologist. Go dig up history for me, please. We'll get a stadium, shrine, uh, shopping mall. You know, these are all just fun, like, decisions that probably won't actually come to fruition. Like, nothing may come of these things that we're doing. But that's okay. Like, not everything you do has to have, like, the perfect calculated outcome. You just kind of, you get through it. You you have a bit of fun. You make sure you're having a good time on the way. And, you know, uh, try, try to enjoy the process. Don't worry about the, the destination so much. Because we've already done, we've already done the process of getting to the destination so now we're just we're just enjoying now we're just trying to like this is this is kind of the part of the game where you kick back you relax and you just make things look pretty that's all you need to do you just need to make them look real pretty like i probably won't steal gold from canada i'll give it the old college try railroad let's get some more railroad there we go film studio art studio uh pro probably people won't I, oh yeah, theming uh so this is the great work screen mod i forget what it's called but basically Let's say, oh man, this is like too much. I just want to see great works of music. Oh man, I can see all of my great works of music, where they can go, where they can't go. 
let's say I want to see where relics can go. Let's say I want to see where great works of writing can go. You know, that's it's fun. You can have them organized by type. You can have it organized the way it is in the original game. This screen is just a beautiful masterpiece of UI design. And here's the best part, okay? Are you ready? I click on theming. And then I click on artifact and now I can only see my artifacts and how the coloration works is the color, if I remember correctly, tells you the era. So green is medieval. OK, so let's put all the green things together. The number tells you the person who made it. So what you want to make happen is for all the colors to be the same, but all the numbers different. And if you do that, you get themed museums. And there you go. I just themed two museums without trying. It's a it's it's an amazing thing that you're it, it, it just enables such elegant gameplay and you could do the exact same thing for great works of art so you could see here uh this one needs a 25 a 23 now this one's themed i've got three so this is the um the color is the type and the number is the artist so all you want to do is have the colors be the same and the number be different and that's the goal. And if you can do that, you can theme your museums. It's literally, this is probably the greatest mod for the, for the, for the Great Works screen. It's, it's amazing. It's called, uh, oh God, Great Works Viewer on the Steam Workshop. It is just, it's, it's, it's an elegant masterpiece of a mod. Um, and this is partially why I, what I love about the Civ community is just somebody will see something in the game and be like, this could be better. And, 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 you know, you're given the tools and ability to do that. That's the beautiful thing about Civ is how much, how much of the game is actually not made by the developers. Because if you think, like, if you, th if you think about it, Civ is like, oh, it's a huge game. And there's a lot happening. But really, the game, like, when the developers, like, stop updating the game, the game's not over. Like, people are still playing it. There's people making mods for it. And if you're not in the modding scene, like, looking at game, looking out new mods and trying new mods out... You're dropping the ball, dude. You're missing out on so much like quality of life. You're missing out on so much new content. And honestly, I personally, I prefer the quality of life stuff over the content stuff. That's just like, you know, that's just that's a personal preference. The, 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 the modded content is cool. Don't get me wrong. It's just like, you know, my preference is for the stuff that makes playing the game a little bit easier. Um, and, and partially the reason why I try to avoid too much modded gameplay, like, the, the gameplay mods that we use this game were very light, okay? Like, they, they're kind of cool and impactful, but really they're, they're quite light um, outside of the context of this game. Like, scouts can build camps on, like, deer and stuff like that. whoop de doo um, Like, the, the gameplay mods we had were very, very light. Um, like, working mountains, building camps. Um, I don't even remember some of the other ones, honestly, at this point. It's been so long. Like, open ranges. Ah, yeah. Extra food next to pastures. These, um, honestly, these, like, gameplay changes just feel like natural little evolutions to me. I think I would, what I would love to do is to put together a potato mod pack. Like, maybe find it. I, I think that's going to be... I, I keep saying stuff like this and I never get around to it, but I really do think I should. I, I should get around to working with a developer and come up with like a pack of mods that all work really, really well together and call it like, I don't know, like the, the community fun pack or something dumb. I keep saying I'll do it and I never do. Um, so how close are we to a win? Because that's going to start dictating my decisions. We're still 18 turns away. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh... Talking about the city of Aquileia, we don't have a neighborhood. If I well, I sh if I build a neighborhood, that'll be another shopping mall. I need to just start converting production into. Um, um, I need to start converting production into. Um, oh my god, I'm having like the greatest brain fart in the history of human brain farts. I need to start turning production into more tourism. Is the end of that sentence that I could not finish? Let's buy a granary, a monument, and a sewer in here. So the city of Houston. Just has that little bit of extra housing so it can grow a little bit easier. Um, I'm amazed that the city has negative amenities considering how like many amenities are in my empire right now. We just finished the harbor. Cool. Let's get the lighthouse. Uh, chosen player wins two diplomatic victory points. I don't really care about these. I guess I'll just ban coal because that's the one the AI tends to vote for. And like, I, you know what? Ban chocolate. Nobody needs chocolate in this world, okay? You're going to be wearing my jeans and listening to my music, okay? Nirvana... It's, it's, I, you know what? I wonder what the 1790 equivalent of Nirvana was. You know what I mean? Like what was breaking out onto the music scene <laughs> in the, in the, in the late, 
uh, uh, 1700s, you know what I mean? The 18th century. 18th century is a good century for a lot of stuff, actually. A lot happened back then. I don't remember a lot of it. Uh, mainly, namely because I wasn't there and I didn't pay too much attention in history. But a lot of really cool stuff happened. Like Napoleon, I think he got like he got up to some shenanigans here at the end of the century. I don't think a lot of people liked it. I actually, I'm pretty sure that Napoleon was like, and this is going to sound like crazy, okay? Napoleon was like viewed like Hitler. <laughs> he was like the, the 1800s Hitler. You know what I mean? Like, C- because of the old traditions, you know, he, he did so much crazy stuff. That's That was their thing. And like, I pre- like the, France was like very much so um, looked unfavorably upon because of Napoleon. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. I might be misremembering. Listen, I could be talking out my ass here. Okay. It's entirely, it's entirely possible. Ass blasting some BS right now. You know what? I'm going to do something wacky. I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to buy this tile. And then I'm going to gold purchase. Oh, all my districts are too expensive. Well, I guess never mind then. I'm going to just uh, gold purchase a commercial hub so I can have like a really fat stack of gold here. That seems okay. Uh, yeah, but I'm pretty sure he was just like, he was reviled, dude. Nobody liked him. Like, which is crazy to think about because today it's going to be Putin. I think that's the guy. That's the guy people, you know, every generation has like a warmonger maybe. Like every, you know, hundred or so years, there's a dude that's remembered. Like this guy defined like terrible international politics and the worst parts of human existence. And that's his legacy now. He has just become that for so many people. Now, obviously he's going to mean different things to different people. But to like the majority of the world, which is, you know, if you're going to appeal to anyone, appeal to the majority. Okay. It makes you look a little bit more right. Now, I know it's a fallacy, but still, people, pe- people don't think in fallacies, okay? You think people are going to be like, that's a straw man. I think, like, no. If you say that's a straw man, people think you're, you're talking about farming, okay? Nobody cares about your debate, your, your, your like, philosophy of like, a good argument. People care about getting dunked on. And, and, and unfortunately, sometimes being with the majority opinion is actually like a, a really valid like, argumentative tactic. It's like, well, most people don't think that's true. And if, and, and if someone's just like, I, I, I like the great thing about an argument like that is you can actually just keep saying that and it stays right. And unless the other person knows how to like properly dismantle a, um, a uh, appeal to the majority or whatever, they'll just be like, yeah, you're appealing to the majority. It's like, yeah, but sometimes, and you could just be like, yeah, but sometimes the majority is right. And like, why is the majority wrong here? And you could just boom, 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 boom. Uh, you know, it's very easy. Actually, you know what? There's, I, there's actually like an inverse Okay, there's like the the underverse where like all those debate fallacies, those are actually like a, a tutorial on how, on how to debate people who are bad at debate. All you got to do is throw red herrings. You got to, you know, bring up random ass crap. Like you should actually, here's what you should do. If you want to be like an incredible, incredible debater, instead of like, what is it? What? Okay. Instead of, um, instead of like looking at all those fallacies and be like, oh no, I... Blah, 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 you should like look them all up and then employ them in every single like argument you ever have and just like and try to master them because if you master them you'll know when someone's using them against you and then you you'll you will know better how to deal with them um and if worst comes to worst you could just you know if you're going to lose the debate sometimes it's better to just you know go whole hog and go dis- disinfo mode um if the other person's doing it go nuts um, no, probably, probably not good advice to be honest with you in the long term. But hey, if someone else starts throwing the nuclear codes at you, you, you flip that switch. If they go nuclear, you go nuclear. I think it's a pretty reasonable thing to do sometimes. If somebody's going, if somebody's real mad, okay, and they start screaming at you, it's totally fine to scream back, okay? That's why when I load up a game at Dota or League, I have to mute chat. I just, I have to, because what happens is, like, I fundamentally, if somebody's being a dick to me, that, like, invalidates their humanity and I can just I'm allowed they're I have their their free game. Uh and that's a dangerous like philosophy to have like underpinning my life and I don't think I can really change it. So the way that I deal with it is I just make sure I can't read other people what what other people write because they're so colossally stupid that it's actually difficult to stop myself from calling them morons. Now let's go ahead and do a open borders check. I think I have open borders with basically everyone. I'm missing them with Byzantium, but he's denouncing me. Uh, we're very, very close to a win. We're at 400 out of 579. I think I need to make a. Um, I think I need to make a blocker shield of units here to keep them from trying to settle forward. But yeah, like gen- genuinely, occasionally, like seriously. Just try it sometime. Next, like go look up a couple of like fallacies, and next time you're having an argument. 
uh, you just use them. Like you, those are your, those are your, your, your secret weapons. You just pull those out and uh, see if, see if the other person could deal with them. I guarantee you, most people won't be able to deal with them because they're not properly equipped for, for an argument. And because they're not properly equipped for an argument, you will just like by default win, win the debate. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, I don't know what's happening here. I don't like the way this is set up. So I'm just not going to place this. I'm going to, I guess this is fine. But yeah, I think it's really, really fun to um, to sometimes do stuff like that where you go like, okay, what is the like forbidden technology of debate? And then you 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 try to use that against someone. You, you, you're like, okay, uh, you know, just like bring up random stuff, misuse statistics, go, go wild. Um, now, obviously don't do this like... Uh, caveat okay let me caveat what i'm saying here don't do this on like a public platform because then you're engaging in misinformation okay i'm very clearly talking about if you're having like a private conversation with someone um where you're where you're talking about stuff go like this is like your battle ground this is like your training ground for good conversations it's like because you like here's the thing most conversations like they're gone it doesn't matter when they're done right nobody nobody cares you know, a week later about your conversation. And if they do care, that person is a baby. Um, they're a baby and they should be ignored and laughed at. Um, so um, just get into debates. And like, as long as you're hanging around with people who aren't like, you know, don't have the skin made of paper, you'll be fine. You, you can, you could just get into arguments. It's actually really, really fun. I probably, you know, I should probably be Susan of these guys. It'll, it'll probably help a little bit. You know, we're up to 1500 tourism. It's our 1500 culture. That's pretty good, I'd say. That's pretty damn good. You know, I'm liking it. I'm not loving it. We're not quite at McDonald's level. I'm liking it, but I'm not, you know, I'm not loving it. I feel like love, that's like a commitment I'm not ready for yet with regards to what's happening. You know, I'm just, I, I think, I think I gotta like, I think I gotta simplify my life here. I need to, I need to have less units asking me for things to do because I'm, I'm running out of time, okay? Time is running out. It would be cool to have another naturalist here. How long until this era is over? We've still got 16 turns. Oh, dude, this game is over. Like, it's not even, like, a little bit over. This game has been over for ages. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and siphon funds. Then, I don't really have a use for you. This guy is, like, well and truly blocked, I'm pretty sure. Which is, like, a, a very nice situation for me to be in. Gently sabotaging your allies. God, we really need, like, an Among Us strategy game where one of the, like, you're all, like, I don't know, it's like a tower defense, but one of your players... Is like is like doing sabotage -y stuff. I don't know. The the Among Us like the concept of like a traitor in a game is so fun because it's like you get to be you get to be evil essentially. It's for free. You get to be evil and it's for free. And usually, being evil has a cost associated with it. But because it's like allowed in the context of the game or whatever, it's so fun because you could just you could just run around and cause chaos and and havoc. Um, let's go back through the tree here and just like pick up every single tech that we're missing. Um, yeah, I really, I really like the Among Us format of, uh, of gameplay. I think it's, I think it's super, super fun. Um, I've always liked those kind of games and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of baffled that it took so long for them to become so popular because these games were huge. Um, like Werewolf. Oh my God. Um, Werewolf is amazing. There was so many games. There was like this old Gary's Mod game I used to play. And it was like, you could turn into an alien. And I remember I was, I was hanging out. It was like my first game and I spawned in, I think as like a regular crew member. And I was walking around. I was like, I, it was, the game was like, you have to go have a shower. And I went and I had a shower. And then I would think I was, I had my asshole eaten by some crazy alien beast. And then I turned into an alien. And then the, like the next round, um, I spawned as like the imposter alien. And, uh... I was like walking down a hallway and this game had like local voice. So I was walking down the hallway and a guy opened the door and we both like stared and stopped and stared at each other. And I just went, hello. And he immediately like lit me up with a flamethrower. And he was like, I knew it. I knew you were an alien. <laughs> and he was like, he, there's no way he knew. I was a brand new player. And I was just like, hi. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That was, that was fun though. That was fun. And then and the, the next round, I was also an alien. Or maybe it was like a couple of rounds later. I don't remember exactly. But I went up into... Um, I went up into the vents. I could see someone up in like a vent area and I went up, but I pretended I hadn't seen them. And then I like looked at them. So I like climbed up, but I, but I had went, I went to a corner away from them. Okay. So they were like, oh dude, this dude's climbing up. But they were kind of acting like real freaked out, but I was pretending I hadn't seen them. And so I was just like hiding in the corner too. And they were like, wait, this dude is like absolutely not sus because he's also just hiding up here. And slowly I like, and then I acted like I spotted them. 
And I like wiggled back and forth and like nodded my mouse up and down. And then they did the same. And then, then I like, we both kind of turned and looked down waiting for another person to climb up. And then, uh, and then I slowly worked my way over to their side of the room and then I completely annihilated him <laughs> in ballet combat. I turned into an alien and that dude got obliterated. That's why you should never trust anyone. <laughs> okay. I will betray it. Um, that was, that was a really fun game. There's, there's so many moments like that in games like that. Um, that really makes them like a beautiful experience. And I think, I think we need, I think it would be cool to have like a Civ 6, um, we had, we have a Civ 6 Battle Royale. Where's our Civ 6 Among Us type game? You know what I mean? Where, um... You know, I know you're all trying to defend against a monstrous horde and then one of the players turns like at certain points in the game or whatever. I don't know, there's, there's a lot of really cool things. Maybe the format doesn't work so well, but conceptually it's such an engaging, engaging style of game. How close are we to winning here? Okay, eight turns. Okay, I think, I think I'm going to just start shift entering my way through the turns because we're kind of at the um, churn and burn, talk about crap stage. And um, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like there's much point in continuing at this level of gameplay. So it says we'll win in five turns. There's the nuclear nuclear program. Let's do just one last check of open borders. Yeah, I definitely want open borders with you. It's a it's a small but significant bonus. It could cost us a turn if I don't do it. Um, can't get open borders with you. Shift enter. We've got totalitarianism now. Four turns until we win, according to the counter. It is it is kind of sad that like Civ games kind of peter out with, with a whimperous fart, you know? Oh wow, really? Up to 16? I guess the numbers just lined up poorly there. Um, you know, like you 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 put so much effort in and you make this like awesome, really, really cool empire, and then you get to the end of the game and it's just like pfft, the game's over. Yeah, I don't know. That's not my favorite thing. I'm just shift entering. I'm done. <laughs> I've mentally checked out of this game a little bit. I'll be I'll be totally honest with you. Which I think is a reasonable place to be. I just need I need this number to come back down. Or else I'll have to keep playing. Five turns. Wow, really? You're gaining so much culture per turn. Did you steal? One option I did have was to declare a war on Canada to prevent him from getting culture um, from this cultural city-states. Uh, one thing I do need to maintain is my trade routes with people. I don't, have, don't think I have a trade route with Canada, do I? Uh, another national park, because that theoretically will make the game go faster. Where are you at, Atlanta? Um, let's just go ahead and buy a trader in here, and we'll trade with Canada the next turn. Okay, five turns until victory, three turns until victory, we're only 40 tourists away. Trade with Canada, shift enter, and the game. Uh, Rome cities are again falling to me. There's giant death robots a plum here. Scotland has two giant death robots, that's a crazy amount. I don't care about Buenos Aires, I just don't want to be at war with people. But yeah, it's just, it's just unfortunate that that's the way things go, is there's a whimperous fart of an ending for a first save sometimes. You know, things just, you know, you, you kind of have a really, really strong early game, mid game, and then pfft, game's over. But I think it's actually fine because, again, these kind of 4X games, it's about the journey, not the destination. The, the process of getting to where you want to go is far more interesting than, like, actually winning the game. And I think it's okay for the game to be like that. I think that's like that's like that's fine. I don't think that's a problem that needs to be resolved. I think sometimes people act like you know, oh, if a game isn't like extremely exciting at every single moment, that it's not like interesting. The worth of a culture is not measured by its accomplishments, but in how those accomplishments last and how they are remembered. The beauty that you have inspired our people to create will ensure that our culture stands for all time. Uh, note to Morbus, make sure you play the ending movie that happened just before I spoke here. All right, that's great. That's the that's the end of the game. We managed to come into 10 ranking. Again, I don't play for a score. Maybe one day I'll do like a score victory thing. Uh, in terms of player score, well, let's have a look at some of these numbers here. Buildings constructed, as you can see, I mean, the blue on blue is kind of hard to see, but you can see I very clearly climbed out. And actually, I'm surprised at how, how early I overtook some of the players here. Um, but I, I tend to find around turn 100, that's when I get my, my, my heels into the dirt and I can start churning ahead. Again, also a lot of districts constructed on my side. Uh, number of combats. I think I was pretty low on combat this game, although I did have a lot of early combat against barbarians. That was really, really frustrating. And then also Rome, who I obliterated up until about this point. Player culture, you can see here my culture just skyrocketing off into the moon uh, as the end of the game. And then there's player faith. You can see mine slowly climbing up here. It was a pretty good faith game. I got very, I got to the faith game very, very late. God, imagine if my curve looked like this. Can you imagine just how... I should totally... You know what I should do someday? 
I should do a deity. I, oh, dude, I have an idea. I should actually do a deity game of Civ 6 where I also have deity AI bonuses and I'm against every single other AI on the map um, automatically at war and they're all in a team. Oh, that would be actually sick as hell. Um, I think we might do that. All right. I love you all very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Here's the Total of Religions founded graph. I love you all very much and bye bye.